All right, y'all. So I'm sitting here with my man, Sawan Belcher, today. You guys have seen him on my channel before. We've done some business together. We've done live events together. We've helped other people make money in real estate. And today, we're going to help you, especially if you have a nine to five, right? So a lot of people feel like they have to earn income. And when you look at the definition of earn income, that's basically money that you have to go out and work for. As an investor, we don't think that way, right? What we want to do is position ourselves to create income. We want to be able to create situations where we can uh, pay ourselves an annual salary on a monthly basis. Amen. You know, a lot of people will make, let's say, $50,000 within a year. What's the average? Um, yeah, it's about it's, 50 grand. Yeah, it's like 50 grand. So that's like $4,000 a month. The annual salary for the average yeah. American is $50,000, right? So what we tend to do is create opportunities that will allow us to make that kind of money in a short period of time. You know, recently I posted a $95,000 check Ooh. on my social platforms and you saw it. I don't like to post checks all the time, but that was just an example of creating income versus me going out. It took me forever, a whole year to go out there. Somebody was paying me 95 grand to be able to do exactly what I did. Right. So a lot of times when you have people that is focused on earning income, what happens is they're they're more so looking for a job and they're more so stuck in that rat race right and that rat race is going to keep you working for the money and a business owner the person that is paying you the money a lot of times those people are making all the money and they're paying you a percentage of the bread you know what i mean so what you really want to do is focus on creating income that's what we're going to talk to my man Sawan about today what's up bro what's up man so why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself man sure. and then we're going to drop some gems on them for sure um uh Sawan belcher this is me taking action everywhere on social media that's how people know me i actually made that affirmation when i quit my nine to five job i, I sold cars and um you know and and car sales was not a nine to five it was like a nine to nine mm -hmm. and you know and you're i mean they celebrate when you work all week long. You know what I mean? Because every day you're there, you have an opportunity to sell. So that's what they wanted. You know, and uh, and of course, if you're working every day, you're not spending time. You know, with your family at church. You know, right. even just with yourself. <laughs> and so, uh, so when I quit, I made I changed my my Instagram name from Crown Honda Sales Guy to This Is Me Taking Action. It was literally me walking out of the door choosing to do something different and uh you know most people when they quit a job you know they like go into this space like oh what i'm gonna do now mm -hmm. you know when i quit when i when i quit bro i had the mentality like i'm going to work yeah, you yeah. know i literally i knew exa I, I felt like i felt like i had just gave myself a promotion and um and i say that because whenever I was at the car dealership, I was selling, you know, 150 to 200 cars a year, mm -hmm. you know. And so when you look at a business that does 150 or 200 sales, you're making them money, right. you know. So I would make them $10,000. They pay me 500, but they get the benefit of being able to allocate the other 9,500 the way they saw fit. Mm -hmm. That's the difference between, you know, earning money, you know, because I knew I was going to get a commission and creating money. Right. They used me to generate leads to make a sale to make this large amount in one transaction. And now they get the benefit of dispersing that money wherever they want to. OK. Right. Yeah. So, you know, a, a lot of people are, are like. Pro, so that's what I was telling my mom. You know, I know it's a law that they put the minimum wage in the break room. You know, so minimum wage is in every break room at seven dollars and twenty five cents. Mm -hmm. Right. But I think they do that to program us that this is what the standard is. <laughs> and then as kids, you know, when you're in high school and you go get a job and they pay you eight dollars because it's more than minimum wage. You say, I did it. Yeah. You know, I'm getting paid more than the minimum. But you but really, you just messed up because you just set your standard up yep. based off of somebody else's standard. You actually lowered your standards. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. But really, you know, when you was a child, you you dreamed about mansions. You dreamed about yeah. cars. Your dad took you to nice car shows, you know, but another, you know, they they literally just killed it right then and there. 
you know, that goes back to the college situation too, man, where, you know, a lot of people don't realize that school was set up to be able to keep you working for somebody else. For sure. I think it was uh, the Rockefeller family or something for like sure. that set up the schooling system to teach you how to go work for them originally and create this rat race. Yeah, the Rockefellers and the uh, and the Ford family, they needed to have more good people. They, they needed created smart, the assembly yeah, line. They needed, yeah, they needed smarter people to work for them. And so that was a good way for them to give people like a like a, like a chain of command. Right. You know, so that once you graduated, once you finished high school, you can come work for Ford. Right. So let's talk about earned income versus creating income, man. Like, why is it not beneficial to earn income? Why would it be beneficial to create income? Well, well think about it like this. Like, um, if I'm earning income, that insinuates that it takes my time, right? It takes my time to actually make that money. So now your value is based off of time. And so then you start telling yourself, I need to spend more time at work in order to make more. Mm -hmm. Right. But if you start to say that I'm going to create, this is a good example. So (laughs) in the, uh, in the game monopoly, my, me and my kids, we play monopoly like every Mm -hmm. month, but in the, one of the end of the games, in the rules, it says that if the bank runs out of money, they can pick up an ordinary piece of paper, write a dollar sign on it, and then it can be used like real money. Oh, that's what the U.S. does. Right. That's what the U.S. <laughs> they just created money. Yeah. So, so the banks create money. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and so when you, when you think about that, it didn't take any time to create it. It, created mm-hmm. it. it says you can pick up any normal piece of paper and write it on it. And you just created it. And so that's powerful because like we literally we don't have to take time to create money. Mm -hmm. We have to use an opportunity. Right. We have to use an opportunity to create it. And so, I mean, really, realistically, it's way easier to make one hundred thousand dollars than it is to make a thousand dollars. (laughs) Bro, way easier. It takes a lot less time, too, man. Exactly. It's just a it really is a mental shift. See, me me, for sure. I I never had a nine to five job, man. So I don't know what it is to work for somebody else. Yeah. My entire life, I've always been in some type of business or some type of hustle myself. You know what I mean? So. Talking to the people, you know, I, I'm a family-oriented entrepreneur. That's for sure. I talk to people who want to change their lives for their families. A lot of people have nine to fives, right? What can they do? Like, what are some of the, some of the things that they can get into in order to be able to shift from working at nine to five? Yeah. In order to start creating opportunities that, that can mindset. pay them a lot more. Break that mindset. So check that. Like I said, the first thing that people, the first thing that the system does is show you how much your worth is. That minimum wage. Break that. There's mm-hmm. no there's no standard on that. The second thing people do is they make it like advantageous for you to work for them by saying, hey, I'm going to provide you health care. I'm going to provide you with taking out your taxes beforehand. I'm going to provide you with a mm-hmm. 401k. Really, you you're paying for all of that stuff anyway. But in our eye, they spin it as though that they did us a favor for us to pay them to provide those things. Either way, you paid. Right. right? So so let's take a step back for a second. Right. So let's, let's think about breaking that mindset a lot of people you know are programmed to believe sure. that working a nine to five is the way the way to go for sure and then you got to work for 40 years and then you just have just enough right you can rely on social security yeah. a little bit of a pension which is going to run out before you die anyway for sure <laughs> you know, so like how can you break that mindset man right. well i call it the gas tank on e mindset because like really <laughs> your car still runs on that's e. right you know what i mean but you just choosing to be on e so one way that I, you know, I, I'm still getting closer and I think we're all getting better, you know, but one thing that I did was really find out what I want. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like before fear hits you, you know, without the emotions of, you know, your wife or your kids, what do you want? You know what I mean? And then you set that as your standard to, to what you want. So one thing that I, that I like doing is I, I don't like shopping at TJ Maxx. Mm. I don't like going to Dollar Tree. There's, there's just not the people that I want to talk to, how I want to feel. Yeah, they're right. not there, you know. And so when you say, well, I'm only going to shop at mm-hmm. this store, you're going to feel some kind of way. So you might have to. That's your standard now. So you so that's the first thing. It's just figuring out exactly what you want. And then secondly, you're going to start. Have, you're going to have to start saying 
better things to yourself. Right. You know. So let me give you one. Let me give you one example. I mean, you know how many. Yeah. <laughs> you know how many quality conversations I had at Ruth Chris that I would never have at McDonald's. Exactly. You know yeah. I mean? Exactly. You know, and it's but but that's like the whole key because. I, I, like I told you before, when we come on here, one thing that my family members down in the country would say when you say, hey, how are you doing? They say, hey, it's another day, another dollar. Mm. And as a child being 10 or 12 years old, in your mind, you didn't add it up. But in your mind, you subconsciously thought, OK, cool, thirty dollars a month, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> and it's like you have to start thinking <laughs> bigger than that. You see what I'm saying? You got to start thinking yeah. bigger than that. Even my, my cousin, that's my acquisition. He said that to me the other day. I said, bro, another day, another $10,000 at least. Mm -hmm. You know, why would you not say 10000 That's right. Why would you say a dollar? Level up, man. Yeah, because you're, you're keeping your gas tank on E if you're thinking that small. That's right. And so if you start to know what you want and then you start watching the things that you say, your brain will start to, your brain will start to like, get to what you want yeah. you know what i mean but you have to know what you want first one yeah. thing i tell people all the time man is the person you are today is a direct reflection of the right. decisions that you made throughout your life for sure you know what i mean so the way you talk to yourself for sure the decisions that you make will reflect the way you talk to yourself and you become that person whether you know it or not for sure so you like you said you got to be careful with how you say things and these affirmations, people don't, you know, affirmations is, is neither here or there, but the way you talk, your, your your ears are listening to how you sound. For sure. And the words that you use, and ultimately that can yeah. lead into Let me give you an success example. or not. Let me give you an example. So, so before, you know, we knew how to print money with wholesaling or real estate, mm -hmm. right? I, um, I, had a, I had my girlfriend, which is my wife now, okay? Um, I wanted to take her to a Panthers you know, football game. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know I couldn't afford the tickets, but instead of telling her that we can't afford to go, I say, yo, let's go tailgate. Mm -hmm. See my brain. I knew I wanted to take her to the football game. My brain figured out a way to make it happen. And I knew I could definitely pay $40 for the tickets. That's right. To, to park so we can tailgate. And now <laughs> we at the game. That's right. You know what I'm saying? And so, but if you tell yourself, oh no, we can't afford to go to the game. Then you're just going to be at home. So you got to become a creative thinker at the end of the day. Hey, man. You got to think. You got to think. And as an yep. entrepreneur, you should be a creative thinker. You should develop yourself For in, sure. into a creative thinker anyway. When I was 18, 19 years old trying to figure out certain things, I wasn't as much of, cre of a creative thinker as I am today. But let me just tell you a little bit of a story, man. So, you know, I started off selling newspapers at seven. I was cutting hair and hustling people in checker games at nine years old, Right. By the time I was 15, I owned a barbershop. Oh, nice. Right? With a partner. And I didn't have any money. This was somebody who had some money. He yeah. wanted to open up a barbershop. I said, I'll be your partner. And we split the money. Nice. Right? I was 15 years old. Here's another one. I went and worked at a, a barbershop. Now, a barbershop is self-employment. I wanted to hustle up more, more money. So what did I do? I drove cabs in New York City. Not the yellow cabs. I saw, you know, I worked at, it was this place on uh, 4th Avenue and 16th Street in Brooklyn called International. Yeah. Right? And this is before Uber and all of that other stuff came out. But this right. is the, the power of creative thinking. So I didn't have a car. What I did was I went to one of the guys who owned the car there who was driving for the, the service. For sure. And I said, I'll give you $60 and fill up your gas if you let me drive your car every day, you know, after... I closed down the barbershop. Yeah. He agreed. I turned that into $200 a day. Exactly. Now, I didn't understand the power of being an entrepreneur, right? But if I did, I would have hired somebody and paid them and split the money with them. And now, I don't have to that's work. That's how you create. That's how you create. That's how you create. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> see, and that's where I was going with it. Amen. Amen. That's, you know? See, and, but I think it really takes an exercise of thinking to really it figure really it out. It really does, You man. know, because it's a, it's a mindset shift. Yeah. It really is. Because... Everybody says, oh, I got to get this overtime. Let me get this OT. Let me get this OT. But do you really? You know, my, my little sister, she stays in one of my houses down here on Willow. Mm -hmm. Right. And I mean, really, I could rent out the house for twelve fifty, but I rent it out to my little sister for nine fifty. Mm -hmm. And she's like, yo, so on, you know, I want to I want to move. I said, where are you going to move to? She said, oh, I'm going to move to this apartment. I said, how much the rent going to be? It's going to be eight hundred dollars. It's going to save me like one hundred and fifty dollars a month. Mm -hmm. I said, honey, 
is do you really think saving a hundred and fifty dollars a month is gonna give you the dream life that you're looking to all. get? Not at all. Seriously. And it's really just and she's like, Well, I guess you're right. And she's like, What what should I do then? I said, Honey, you should think about creating money as much as you're thinking about saving money. That's right, man. Yeah. You know, a lot of people try to get discounts. A lot of people have the discount for sure. mindset, man. <laughs> for sure. Rather than saying, for let sure. me let me do this for and then sure. I'll figure out how I'm gonna pay for it. Exactly. That's how you become a creator. Exactly. You know what I mean? So hey, like yeah. the way me and you talk to each other, yeah, you know, a lot of times when when we have conversations, it's never about how I'm taking something away. Exactly. Right? I'm never trying to take anything away from myself. Yep. And not <laughs> even, so long. even yesterday. <laughs> yesterday yeah. I was like, yo, let me help you with that. You know? Yeah. Creating. Exactly. Yep. Exactly, man. Creating. And those are the type of people that you want to be around. Yeah. When you're around employee mindset people. For sure. Um, you're gonna continuously be an employee. They say you are the closest five people you hang around. Think about everybody you hang around at at work. For sure. They're all employees, man. They For all sure. want a paycheck. So naturally, you're going to be that way. Now, sometimes you, you're in a position where you, you got to have that income coming in until you build up. Amen. Because I, I would never yeah. tell anybody to leave right. short income for hopeful income. For sure. Right? Because an entrepreneur's income is hopeful income. For sure. Until you solidify passive income that for comes sure. in every month. Right? Um, but just think about being the, cre the creative type. You can still separate yourself from everybody at work spend less time with them after work and exactly. and still be a leader while you're while you're in work and then at the end of the day you can still create your opportunity as long as you're willing to put in the work after you leave the job you know what i mean so that ties right into creative real estate investing and for some sure. of the stuff that we wanted to talk about to give you guys a game plan man so why don't we talk a little bit about that bro for sure so the way we're going to create income is of course we're a real estate investor so we're going to use real estate to do that but like i said with that monopoly rule right they could literally just create money mm -hmm. so we have to figure out how how we can do that with real estate mm -hmm. all right and essentially if we're able to if we're able to find a property Let's call it that house on Willow where my sister stays, right? I picked up that property for $50,000. Mm -hmm. I held on to it for a year. And when I refinanced the property, it appraised at $150,000. So essentially, I created $100,000 in that transaction, mm -hmm. okay? I didn't have to do more than I was already right. doing in order to increase that income just by doing what I already did gained it created more money so in real estate the way we're going to create money is through equity and so equity is essentially you know what you owe now you know um minus what you can sell it for right now as is right okay and and i think once people realize that they'll focus on well how to how to freak do we find these kind of opportunities and then secondly how do we find a way to fund these opportunities so that way i can do is as many deals as possible without having to think about it. And that comes with being around the right people. For sure. And I'll give you an mm -hmm. example of that as yeah. well. Um, I just won a property on auction.com. Nice. <laughs> right? And that's just one of the ways that I buy real estate. And like you said, creating equity, I verified what the property will be worth before I actually bought it. So my realtor is telling me close to 200 grand. Yeah. Right? I got the property for 88000 and one dollar. Nice. Right, so eighty eight thousand one dollar today. We literally with two hours ago, I signed the contract, and by putting forty thousand dollars into the property, that's going to give me that two hundred thousand dollar valuation. So I'll be all into the house at one hundred and thirty grand. Yeah, right. That means I have seventy thousand dollars, right, in profit, right, just off of one opportunity, right. Now check it out. I can use my own money to fund it. But while I'm sitting here talking to Sawan, we created an opportunity. He has a private lender who wants a flat fee. And just by paying that flat fee, I don't have to come out of my pocket with my own money. I can use that for another opportunity. So, yeah, I'll give up whatever that fee is, whatever those points are, make a little less money. Even if I made $50,000, that's $50,000 more than what I had and I don't have any money, any skin in the game. Exactly. That's creating mm -hmm. an opportunity and networking with the right people. And that's how you guys do it. You know what I mean? So yeah, how can sure. we do that through creative finance, bro? So, the, well, the way that we fund these kind of deals, in, in my opinion, my, my 
my strongest success, honestly, has been from either A, um, if the house is paid off, you know, um, uh, persuading and putting a little sales game on and showing the seller how it's more beneficial for him to become the bank and hold the note for me to give him a fair amount down. This is what you say to him. Um, you know, if I paid the price that you want, you know, um, would you consider a fair amount down and I'll pay you over time? You know, so uh, attorneys call that seller financing. Yep. OK. Um, and secondly, is when the seller already has the best terms that I already have a loan in place and we're just going to take those terms over, you know, because really funding, in my opinion, um, is probably about the strongest thing that a real estate investor has, yeah. you know, in his in his in his Absolutely. box. You know what I mean? Uh, most people, when they're going to get a loan, they have to have nice clean credit. Yep. They got taxes for the last two years. They got to be on the job for the same two years. You know, they have so many different, they have so many different regulations, yeah, you sure. know, but as an investor is our tools are what we know. And so our, we know that the seller, you know, ownership is just a piece of paper. That's right. You know, a deed of trust is just a piece of paper. So if we can get someone to see that this is paper, you know, and see that there's value in that, we can actually just move things around. So that way the seller can either come off of the, you know, the property completely through subject to, you know, or the seller can be in a spot where they'll actually become the bank. Uh, this is this is my close. <laughs> you know, have you ever read that Bible? Have you ever read that Bible verse where it says that you should become the lender and not the borrower? This is God giving you your chance. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, and most of the time they're you like, that oh, the <laughs> oh yeah, all the time, all the all the time. Because some people, once, it's a mindset shift. Yeah, it's 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 not that they're losing. So the same thing with the house that I just bought. You know, the guy absolutely. Cause he paid cash for that. He built the house brand new, mm -hmm. you know, paid a, a, a 1.1 million to build it, you know, paid cash to buy all four of the pieces of property to build this joint. So he's thinking cash, 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 cash. Okay. So for me to get his thinking on why this would be beneficial, one of the things that he said for he said, well, before I agree with you, I need to um, talk to my CPA to see what my tax is going to look like. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, you know, uh, ask him about the taxes. If you were to not take that full amount, if you were to just take a portion oh, of defer the payments. Yeah, exactly. Right. If you were to defer, defer, you know, defer the payments. And if he says it would be beneficial for you to do that, then call me back. Mm -hmm. And he called me back. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so um, so when you have tools like that, that gives us a clear advantage to create because we didn't have to bring money. And we just that, created it. And that comes with information, yep. knowledge. For sure. Et cetera, man. For sure. This is how you, once you understand how to play the game, we wasn't born with this information. That's for sure. You know what I mean? We gathered this information over time. And again, by being surrounded with the right people, man, this is how you create opportunities at that's the end for of the day. That's for sure. You that's know? for sure. I was, I was blessed to be in, well, I was blessed to actually have the faith to get in some of those rooms. Cause once you get in the right rooms with the right people and they say one thing, you know, that throws gas on your fire. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it just takes you to the next level. We get that on the YouTube comments a lot. Man. <laughs> a lot I got this one video. I got over 2 million views on, um, by far one of my biggest videos, how to buy your first rental property, even if you're broke. Nice. Right. I get so much hate on that video because people oh, don't sure. understand. They for just sure. don't understand for the sure. concept and the thinking of an investor. For sure. So they're like, there's no way this is possible. I just had one today. The guy said, this all sounds good, but it also sounds shady. And, all this <laughs> other stuff. and I'm like, okay, the, it's going to be shady if you think it's shady. For sure. There's absolutely nothing shady about it. No, not at all. You know what I mean? See, or it, people will say something like, so, no seller is going to take their payments over time. Oh, yeah. That's never going to happen. Yeah. How many times has it happened for you, bro? Oh, bro, it just happened to me four times in the last 30 days. I just <laughs> I just got four doors on YouTube on a video between two videos, four doors through seller financing. Bro, I saw Mr. Tony uh, at Stephanie's after church. He was like, yo, I just picked up 17 properties subject to yeah. for one seller. You know, and so, I mean, and I always tell people, like, we didn't just make this up. Right. People have been doing this for, for years, years man. for years, for years. And if you don't mind, I want to do a little a little test in the comments real yeah. quick, because it's always people always start to understand a little bit after this. OK, so if you got a if you're watching this now and you have a traditional loan, right, you went through the traditional way of qualifying for a loan, getting a realtor, buying it and getting a traditional loan, put a one in the comments below. OK, most people don't know that whoever originated the loan 
doesn't keep that piece of paper. They sell it. They sell it. So in 30 days, okay, you guys, you guys that put a one in the chat, the owner property, the original loan, put a two in the chat. If 30 to 45 days later, you got another, you know, letter saying, hey, this bank, a bank sold it to this other bank. Don't pay us no more. Pay them. Yep. Okay. Put a two in the chat. And you guys will understand that the owner didn't change. But the deed of trust changes. So they sold that piece of paper. And this is seller financing and subject to. It's That's nothing it. but us doing the same thing that the banks have been doing for years. That's yeah. it, man. And once you understand that concept, you'll understand how you can make money the same way the banks for sure. make money as well. That's for, that's it, for it sure. It really is that simple. So if, if you had to take anything away from what we're talking about here, the thing is don't overcomplicate the situation. Don't overcomplicate the, the business. You know, and you have to believe in the business a little bit more if you doubt any of it because you haven't done it yet. You know, there's millions of people. Would you say millions? Millions. Millions sure. of people millions. making money yeah. doing this. For sure. Right now. And just because you haven't done it doesn't mean it doesn't work. You know what I mean? So I know you got something coming up, man. Oh, um, for sure. You want to talk about that? Yeah, I, um, well, uh, you know, Jamel always does me a favor and jumps on it and shares on those. So I figured I'd share the class with you guys. I do a live training on this. So that way I can show you guys how to find the exact seller that you're looking for, you know, because we don't want to talk to everybody in the county. We don't want to talk to a million people. We just want to talk to that, you know, two or 3% of the people who are, who will actually consider this. And then I also train you guys on what exactly to say to them. And then more importantly, I have my attorney come on the call and he goes through all of the paperwork that you need to know and have so that way you can do these transactions. And at the end of that call is a five is a five hour training. At the end of that call, we go over five different ways for you to close that property and get paid to either keep it or to sell it. And um, and once again, you know, um, it's, it's once we learn how to do it is about doing it as many times as possible. Um, you know, definitely join in on the class. Uh, it's, I have the most students that have no, I don't know if you know Noah, but I know Noah lives in Cleveland. He actually just sent me a 42 unit deal subject to, um, but, uh, he went from teaching. Okay. He went from teaching biology, high school biology in three months. He left his job nine months. He had 30 rental doors, all subject to, nice, you know, man. and so, and if you consider a, let's call it a net profit of three, $300 per door. My man's bringing in 10 grand cash flow in nine months. You know what I mean? And um, and when you learn something this powerful, I mean, it could be that it really could be that fast, you know. And a lot of it is, like you said, it's creating the opportunities For and sure. knowing how to create them and knowing how to speak to the sellers in order to be able to do it. And doing it as many times as possible. So, listen, I'm going to leave the links that you need to join Sawan in the uh, description box of this video. Make sure you check it out. Um Look, all we're trying to do here is provide you guys with value, give you a, a mindset shift. If you're working a nine to five, it's totally okay, right? But you have to get out of that nine to five mindset. You can build a, a real estate portfolio while you have that nine to five. Amen. But the goal should be to get out, use it to get out of the nine to five as quickly as possible, right? So you can replace your income through real estate to get out of that job that you're working right now. So... Any last words for our listeners, man? For sure. So just re just remember why real estate is so powerful in order to create this kind of income is number one, we create income with equity. Okay. We also create income by being able to get paid monthly. Okay. We create income by using all of those income, you know, by using all of that, the property and all protecting ourselves from taxes while we create income with appreciation. Mm -hmm. You know, and so you learning how to do this is not just creating money in one different way. It's creating it five different ways, which is going to uh, cause you to grow five times faster than you in your current situation at your job. You can you only got one source of income at your job with, with one house. You got five. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. You know, I'm a family oriented entrepreneur. So one has more kids than me. Amen. You know what I mean? You got six, right? I got six. Yeah, five girls, yeah. one boy. I got five. I got four girls and one boy. Yeah. <laughs> so we're both family oriented entrepreneurs and we want to see families win. That's what this is all about. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Be sure to like it, subscribe, click the notification bell. I'll see y'all on the next one.